The tantalizing possibility that life could exist on the red planet has driven exploration of the planet Mars for generations. But what evidence is there for this? We're going to talk about one of the most tantalizing discoveries of the past 20 years today. I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. The study of the planet Mars is something that has captivated me my whole life. It's the reason I named my other channel Scorpio Martianus. I love the planet Mars. And one of the most important questions that exists in science is whether or not there's life there. This is an incredibly broad question. So today I'm just going to concentrate on one specific area of recent studies and what theoretical framework there exists for the explanation of life even being on the red planet. This is one of the most important questions that exists in science because so much of the studies of science really have to do with life, understanding biology. And the reason this is so important is because Earth clearly had the environment to foster the evolution of life. But Mars did too in its early history. It seems to have had nearly all the right elements. It had an atmosphere, it had oceans, it had liquid water, it had the right temperatures, it had the right chemistry. Did it evolve there? The current atmosphere is so thin that it can no longer support life on the surface as we know it. However, it certainly did have a much thicker atmosphere millions or billions of years ago. So from this century and the centuries henceforth, where we explore the red planet, if we don't find any life there, it's this incredibly important thing to learn. If we don't find any life at all on the red planet, it means that the conditions in which life evolves, which we think include these things like the right chemistry, the water, the temperature, all of which Mars had, if there never existed anything there to suggest that there was life in the past of Mars, then that means we have to really reanalyze how the evolution of life must have taken place. But if we do discover some kind of life there, such as simple bacteria, it will mean that the phenomenon of life is as common in the universe as planets and stars. The discovery or non-discovery of life on Mars is therefore this incredibly important question which will completely change our framework for understanding the universe. Either life is an incredibly common phenomenon or it's an incredibly rare phenomenon. It probably isn't somewhere in between. One of the most amazing recent discoveries is that there is methane in the atmosphere of Mars. Now this has been discovered both by rovers as well as by satellites in orbit around the planet. The discovery of methane in Mars' atmosphere is very peculiar, and this is because methane breaks down over time. Over the course of a few years or to a hundred years, any methane that's in the atmosphere should be broken down simply by the ultraviolet light that Mars receives. And yet, on irregular cycles, seemingly even on seasonal cycles, methane is appearing in Mars' atmosphere and then disappearing during the winter months. There do exist geological explanations for this phenomenon, that is, non-biological explanations. There could be volcanism on the planet Mars. As yet, we haven't discovered any active volcanism. Mars' volcanoes seem all to be extinct, like the largest mountain in the solar system, Olympus Mons, named after Mount Olympus, the home of the ancient Greek gods. This thing is enormous, by the way. It's about the size of Texas. Incredible. And there are other possible non-biological explanations for how the methane could be generated and even disappear in this seasonal way. Nevertheless, a biological explanation is very compelling. Bacteria deep within the surface of the planet may be consuming rock material and then emitting methane. No bacteria or other life forms have ever been discovered on the Martian surface. However, that doesn't mean they can't exist deep within the ground. Until we have sufficient tools, whether in the form of unmanned missions or manned missions with astronauts on the Martian surface, we won't have the opportunity to fully explore that explore the most important question in all of science. And speaking of bacteria, it is the simplest form of life. We know that of course there are viruses, but whether or not viruses are in fact living organisms is still a matter of debate, even though they clearly interact with living things like living cells. So let's take it for granted that the bacterium is the simplest form of life that we know. I would like you to do a thought experiment if you're 
in a room right now. Imagine this room. It has windows, it has lights, it has this power generation, it has heat. It uh, may even have physical moving parts in it. It has chairs, different kinds of materials, all working together in order to be a room. Now imagine that that room spontaneously creates itself out of the raw plastics, metals, and woods, as if those materials are just lying around. And it just spontaneously assembles that way into this incredibly complex form, which can also reproduce itself. Essentially, this is the bacterium. A bacterium is the simplest form of life that we understand, but it is by no means simple. In addition to DNA, cell walls, other microorganelles, the bacterium is incredibly complex and it can reproduce itself. The history of the evolution of life on Earth demonstrates that simpler forms of life tend to be much more numerous than more complex forms of life. And given that bacteria make up the lion's share of biota on the planet Earth, it would make sense that whatever came before it, because something had to come before it, this can't be something that just spontaneously created itself, there must have been some kind of antecedent. But those antecedents are not on Earth. One explanation is that those antecedents were simply outcompeted by bacteria, and thus they vanished, and they don't exist in the fossil record. However, that seems to be relatively unsatisfying simply because it's not how life seems to be. The more, there are much more of the simpler things than there are of the more complex things. It is an explanation and it's possible, but um, it doesn't seem to fit our theoretical framework. Thus, we come to another explanation. In the solar system, the planet Earth was not the first location that was most suitable for life. We talked about the things that make life suitable. Liquid water, the right temperature, the right chemistry, an atmosphere. All of these things are certainly necessary in one form or another, in one amount or another. Well, if we look at the inner planets, Mars, the Moon, Earth, Venus, and Mercury, according to the models of solar system evolution, all of these worlds, after they condensed together from smaller pieces, became molten completely all the way through to the surface. And while Earth still was covered with magma oceans, Mars, being smaller and further away from the Sun, was condensing faster, cooling faster. It's just a hypothesis, but it makes much more sense to say that Mars certainly cooled and had liquid oceans while the Earth was still inhospitable for life. Thus, of these two locations, if it's just about the right chemistry, the right temperature, and the presence of liquid water, Mars had those conditions many millions of years before the Earth did. So it's possible that life evolved on Mars first. And more than that, we have positively identified over the course of a century meteorites that have landed on the Earth over the past so thousands, even perhaps millions of years, that have come from other planets. We can identify their chemistry accurately to know that, in fact, some meteorites do come from Mars. Antarctica is a great place to find them because the white ice makes dark-colored meteorites rather easy to find. In the 90s, the rather famous Allen Hills meteorite, this one scientists opened up and analyzed and found that there are tiny little microscopic structures in them, which look like bacteria, except they're too small. Now, whether or not these are, in fact, bacteria or some kind of living form is inconclusive. Generally, it's thought that maybe not. However, what it demonstrates is that a meteorite confirmed to have come from the planet Mars was able to preserve inside it, at a relatively low temperature, very complex structures. That is, even though it burned through the atmosphere at incredibly high speeds, and had a very heavy impact when it reached the surface, it was able to actually transport things like bacteria. Now, whether or not this particular meteorite did transport any bacteria or some other living thing, we don't know. Maybe even it's unlikely. But it's an actual possibility. Indeed, meteorites, due to impacts from asteroids on the inner planets, meteorites are passing between all of the planets all of the time. Over the course of millions of years, it's like swarms of birds traveling from tree to tree. Thus, in this hypothetical framework, we have 
a planet Mars that has cooled and has liquid oceans, the right conditions for the evolution of life much earlier than Earth. We have an environment with lots of bombardment of asteroids in the early part of the solar system, a significant amount of transfer of material between all of the planets, with the possibility that some of these objects could even safely bring organic material, even living organic material, between these planets. Thus Mars could have been pollinating all of the planets around it for millions of years. And Earth is one of those places which finally, when it cooled enough, it did have liquid water on its surface. It did have the potential for life to evolve. But perhaps the seeds of life were already more fully developed. Bacteria, simple, simple bacteria as we call them. And that may be the origins of life on Earth. Or perhaps panspermia is a better theoretical idea, that life may have evolved even outside of the solar system, even before the solar system existed, and could be spread throughout the whole galaxy for millions of years, just waiting to land on the right planets that can support further development. All this is still theoretical. I tend to think that the notion that life may have evolved first on Mars and been transported to the Earth through this kind of asteroid interchange, given that a bacterium is so complex, that seems like a real possibility. But we're not going to know until we do further explorations of the Red Planet. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and thanks most of all to my Patreon supporters. Walete. Thank you.